and I love windows like the cheap hula hoop that it is. Hi folks, I've got something for you. Thought of the day? It's funny how an open source operating system like Linux is more closed and secure than the highly professional owned, closed, and highly corporatized Windows, which is the, the most open and insecure. Think about that. But I do love Windows. It's extremely, extremely useful. I have tons of fun with it. Wouldn't trade it for the world. I'm going to discuss the Windows and Windows Server command netshell in an introductory fashion. Open up a command prompt like this and run, type in cmd, hit enter, and open up a command prompt. Enter the command net sh. No spaces. Net sh. This is a command line and scripting utility for networking components for local or remote computers. NetShell can save a configuration script on a text file or configure other servers remotely. So it's potentially quite powerful. It's built into Windows and is used from the command line more than you know. So if you're new to technology and there's something I want to make you aware of, Many of you already know about, or think you know about, what a command line is. Some of you grew up with DOS, like me. And especially if you're a new tech, or say you just want to be a specialized technician or administrator, like a database administrator. I've got a friend, for instance, who I helped negotiate a $20,000 raise for himself. And he's now making 140 k as a SQL da database administrator. But he is not the most technically savvy person in the world. He's a DBA. He cares very little about other details, okay? All he thinks about is his DBA stuff. He's got me for that other stuff. So maybe you are a brand new junior a network administrator. On Maybe you're working on a network or trying to get onto a network and, and you're learning the ropes. Or maybe you're a new management information systems person who's caring for a growing and aging database in a medium-sized business. So you do need to think about this, what I'm about to tell you, and this type of thing. If you're taking the, for instance, if you're new or just growing, trying to stay current, if you're taking the CompTIA A plus exam or preparing for it or studying SQL or some other server specialty, or even if you're preparing for something like Cisco CCNA or the ICND1 exams, an exam like the CompTIA A plus is a Windows centric exam. All right. And it will not, by its nature, just show you everything for your consideration. It will not approach things in an open-minded fashion. It won't. And a Windows-centric corporate type whose teaching is obligated to preach the company line to you. I'm not. So I just wanted to bring to your attention here and now that you're dealing with some network concepts like IP version 6 now. IP version 6. This is where the uh, net shell comes in. It's very, very important. You may or may not be aware of certain things that are built into Windows automatically. You have to investigate, learn on your own, or be taught. These options will not be exposed normally in the course of normal introductory classes, yet it is introductory knowledge, actually, in reality, and I think you should be very aware of it. It's just the way that Windows thinks, and I think it's important. But if everything you learn is taught from a Windows point of view, you may miss something. So. Personally, even though I do love Windows and use it, um, I'm not purely Windows oriented. And if you guys ever learn anything that's really, really cool and different about Windows, just let me know too. So take a look at NetShell, open the prompt, go to this command prompt, and you see the, the cursor itself, the prompt changes to NETSH. Okay? This is special this shell is special. You can do some powerful and special things from here. And one thing that's a part of the CompTIA A plus training, if you're listening to a good instructor who's kind of covering everything, but yet not really, he'll tell you that if Windows is used in IP version 6, there are two ways that the operating system may create a unique identifier for that machine. And Understanding this distinction is actually critical to fully understanding the automatic implementations of IP version 6. One way of implementing IP version 6 within Windows is Windows-centric and native 
in a world based purely on Windows technology. The other way is random in a different way and has to be invoked by you manually. You need to be aware of these. Now at that net shell prompt type a question mark and hit enter and you'll get all of the commands that you're able to invoke at this prompt, okay? It's got a lot of capability built into it, see? Sometimes, depending on the servers I'm setting up, I must disable IP version 6 network tunneling and you must use this net shell command for that. You, you've got to disable what they call Teredo tunneling. In one of my classes I explain it more thoroughly. Or here, use the net shell to tell Windows in this case, how you want to randomize the IP version 6 identifier for your machine. You either use the MAC address of your NIC card or you let it just do it mathematically within and for some hocus pocus Bill Gates reason. All right. Now take a quick look at this also. If you type in the word interface, hit enter. Now hit question mark. Okay, you get new and different options. Let's um, type in show. Whoops. Show question mark. Okay, those are your options for the word show. It shows you information. Show mode. Says online. Okay. Try TCP. Hit question mark. Take a look at your options here. Okay, you get the idea? Let's get out, type exit, and go to back in, question mark. You either enable or disable that function. So let me show you. This is the command that you have to use if you want to disable normal Windows randomization. Don't enter it, but type in that shall interface IP version 6 set global randomize identifiers equals disabled. Did I spell that right? Net SH interface IP version 6 set global randomize identifiers equals disabled. So what you do here with this command is you're shutting off the Windows ability to randomize the IP version 6 address. And what it will use then is your MAC address built into your NIC card just in case. You need. And this is something that I would think, especially if you're a new guy learning the technology and going into Cisco, you'll learn about. Or if you're an A+, they'll make sure you know about. Just wanted to point this out. Have a good one. I'll see you later.